Hi everybody, I'm Greg, your avid amateur, and I hope you're having a great day because I am. And I got this cargo carrier. If you watched my last video, I put it together and did a little review on it. And I'm looking at it and I'm asking this. carry something on this thing unless you buy one of those big bags to set in it. And I don't want a big bag. And the reason I don't want the big bag is because they're just so high and you limit the, the height of anything you put in here. So we've got to do something else. Well, I've got the plan. I've got two half-inch sheets. Actually, it was one sheet, and I cut it in half. You have to cut it in half, or it won't go in here. A plywood. And they fit just like that. There it is. What do you think? Now when I drop something on it, it looks good. I'll tell you what else I did. You can buy covers for these things. And again, they're not very tall. And you can get the netting. That's not real good. So what I did was I bought a charcoal grill cover. I'll put it up on the screen here now. And it'll fit right around this thing. And then I had an old cargo carrier from a, a car I used to have. And I'm going to put it on top and band it around. And that will keep everything clean now. This will keep the mud coming up from underneath. And I painted this with an oil-based paint. And then the, the uh, grill cover will fit around here. And it, the grill cover has a lot of neat features. Uh, it's got Velcro pleats on the sides so you can tighten it down. And it also has air vents so you can let some air in here. And it's waterproof. So I don't know what more you want. But uh, when I get going here, I'll, I'll show you just exactly how that works as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill two holes to mount the plywood so that when I tilt it up, it won't fall out if I decide to tilt the carrier up to the back of the car. And then I got another thing coming. They're not here yet. They're supposed to be here today. I bought some eyes. And I'm going to drill holes in this top rail. Put five on the side. And those will be my tie-down hooks. And then, I think it's going to be really a nice carrier. So I'm going to get to work, drill some holes, get these mounted. And I'll get back to you. Okay, I marked my hole. And I centered it on this cross member under here. And we're ready to drill. screw down in there, put a nut on it, and we're ready to go. Just like that. I'm going to do that three more times and we're all set. 
I've got one eye on and I centered it 10 inches and I'll center the next one another 10 inches and uh, 13 30 seconds from the inside in because of the lip on the outside here. You can't put it in exact center. Now I use stainless steel so they won't rust. I suppose you should use some sort of coating or rubber bushing or rubber washer or something on this to prevent galvanic corrosion. But uh, I'll watch it and if something does start to corrode, why? I'll pull them out and do something different. But I'm probably old enough that by the time it does that, any damage, I'll be gone anyway. So, what did I do here? Well, I marked my hole 10 inches. That'll put four of them on a side. Then I use my square here. mark 13 30 seconds now my eyes are quarter of an inch so what I did was I drilled through at 7.30 seconds and I kind of wallowed, wallowed the drill around a little bit and then I just drilled the top hole a quarter of an inch and what that'll do is it'll actually thread, the bolt will thread itself into the aluminum on the bottom side and that'll keep it from wanting to wobble. I don't want a loose fit, I want a very tight fit. So let me do it, I'll show you. This is seven thirty seconds. And when you drill through the bottom side, you want to make sure your drill is good and straight so that your eye will be straight. When I threaded in, I picked up the wrong drill. Well, we'll have to go with that on this one. Now, I'm using Loctite glue and a self locking nut. It came with nuts, but I want the self locking on there. That's a bummer. I screwed that up. Pardon me. Don't you make that same mistake. Okay, there's that one. Good and tight. 
Let's see if I can do the next one right. Change bits. Mark your spot. Change drill bits. Now you don't have to do this. I just think it helps. Now just drill. Through the top hole. See, it's, see how it's tight now. It takes a little extra effort to do it this way, but I think it's a good thing to do. Lock tight. Washer. And you have to use a little ratchet. There you go. Well, I got to do this uh, five more times. So when I get done, we'll come back and we'll take a look. At it. I think it works better when you use the two drills. Oh yeah, and what, why I wanted this. You know, the steel ones have expanded metal. And we were camping a couple weeks ago and I was looking at a, a fellow who had a steel with expanded metal on the bottom and he said it was a mess because dirt gets up in between the in the little diamond shapes of the expanded metal and he said every time I use it he said I gotta wash it like crazy and it gets everything dirty from the bottom side up now the plywood I use is half inch and it takes a little less than a quarter of a sheet to, to fill the bottom and that'll weigh around eight nine pounds is all so that's all the weight you're actually adding and I think it's worth it to keep everything clean from the bottom when you're out on the road alright well I'm gonna get the drill in and work in here well here it is all finished got four along the sides and then one on each end just pull your strap and you can tighten things right up I think this is so much better than those big bags where you're limited to the size All right, the next time you see this, it'll be loaded on the back of my Forerunner, and we'll be going camping. But in the meantime, 
you get out there and you keep your shutter clicking, keep your wheels turning, and I'll catch you on a rebound. Bye now. Mm -hmm.